When it comes to analyzing the identity of humans, it's so important that we look at consciousness. It's really the hallmark of what it means to be a human. But nobody knows exactly how it originated or how it came to be. All we know is that it's here and it makes us so unique compared to all other animals. So today we're going to be looking at four different theories that try to explain the origin of human consciousness. The first theory is that of evolution and not evolution the one that you're familiar with, but kind of applying those principles more to communication and the development of symbolism along with language. This theory really boils down to the evolution of grunts and points into repetitive designated sounds in order to convey meaning. This idea of symbolism is so important. What's happening when we communicate is that we're referring to something outside of our immediate interaction, something you could say it's abstract like language, like the English language, for example. This is why, you know, the symbol isn't as important as what's what's connected to it. So if I'm speaking Chinese to you and you don't understand Chinese, those symbols have, they don't mean anything. And those repetitive sounds that are designated to mean certain things don't mean anything. So what's important here is the human designation of meaning onto symbols outside of our interaction. This ability was then refined through thousands and thousands of years of mainly gossip as human as groups of humans expanded and became you know chiefdoms and larger and larger villages and eventually cities we have social interactions and social hierarchies developing and expanding and as they did human relationships became different and the fact that it was so important where you kind of were on this hierarchy you needed to know you need to be able to talk to people and to kind of dig dirt on people and gossip back and forth and understand, you know, is this guy on my side? Like, what did he do yesterday? And was sitting around, you know, with no iPhones or anything. That was something that people, in theory, did a lot of. So there's this kind of an idea that gossiping was really the mechanism for the evolution of communication. A good example that illustrates the connection between evolution in real natural selection with animals and communication is a line by the water example. And what we have here is somebody goes, some villager, some hunter gatherer goes by the water and sees a lion as they're gathering for resources, for example. If they can go back to the village and effectively communicate to the people there that there was in fact a lion by the water and tell people to avoid the river or whatever, that village and that group of people are gonna be more successful in the long run because that danger has been mitigated. The next thing I wanna talk about is the theory of hallucinations and their impact on human communication and consciousness. This, is po this has been popularized by Graham Hancock and he did a lot of work on it in his book, Supernatural. The basis of this theory is that hunter-gatherers spent a lot of time gathering and really trying new food in order to try and find new food sources, especially as they moved across the continents. And eventually, just, it was just a matter of time before they ran into things like magic mushrooms that contain psilocybin. After consumption of this psilocybin, they would have creative experiences, these out-of-body experiences, see different symbols and stuff like that. What Graham Hancock is theorizing is that eventually through all these hallucinations, there's kind of a cognitive dam that had been broken and that humans, although they had the capability before, kind of awoken into this ability to consciously think and more effectively communicate. Graham Hancock attributes this to the explosion of humanity and how humanity and consciousness and really our development over the last thousand, few thousand years has been started by hallucinations, kind of this explosion of human thinking. Although I will post a separate video all about this theory as I think it's so important and there's so much information to cover. I'm gonna cover two lines of evidence that Graham Hancock presents. One is that the first paintings and the first abstract or the first expressions of abstract thinking are in locations that have tons of psilocybin and they're oftentimes in the form of paintings, drawings, or sculptures. His second is that the formation of religions also happens in these same places and oftentimes people are actively worshiping mushrooms in many of these areas where there are plenty of mushrooms and we know for a fact the hunter-gatherers had settlements there. It's a fascinating theory and I'd highly recommend checking out Graham Hancock's book, Supernatural. 
The next theory we're going to be talking about is creation slash direction because they are two different things. First, let's talk about creation. And it's this idea that humans were created in their present form with the ability to abstractly think and had consciousness. This would make them different from humans that we dig up from millions and millions of years ago that don't have the ability to think consciously. They'd be kind of a new form, and this is oftentimes inside by religions to kind of prove or kind of suggest a starting point for the origin of humanity, specifically kind of the modern version that we have today. The next theory is actually kind of Graham Hancock's theory, or at least he he modified, actually I didn't take that back, he modified Francis Crick's theory about the origin of humanity. And for those of you who don't know, Francis Crick was actually one of the co-discoverers of DNA and spent a lot of time asking himself, how did DNA come about? How did humans come about? And he had his own theory for the origin of consciousness in humanity itself. This theory is direction. And I'll specifically talk about Francis Crick's as it's fascinating. He thought that there's an ancient civilization, not a human civilization, that actually sent out there was on the brink of extinction and sent out a bunch of different capsules containing bacteria all to these different planets. And inside these capsules were, were DNA that they had designed, so the DNA that we currently have. And their idea was to send these out to planets that could be uh, survivable, and Earth was one of them. And the, these capsules reached Earth starting life. And life on Earth eventually developed through evolution which was programmed in the, into the DNA and eventually human beings came about and hallucinations are an opportunity for humans to kind of connect with our original designers. It's absolutely a crazy theory and not that it's false but it's just it's wild and I think that it does a good job of illustrating the difference between direction and creation. This creation is by a divine being that's kind of outside of the natural laws where direction is something that's inside of the natural laws, but maybe just a very intelligent, advanced being. 